When they got to the promised land, the manna stopped. God stopped sending the manna the moment they crossed over into into the place of promise. So what are they going to eat now? Well, they had already spied out the land many, many years before. They what? They spied it. Spied it out. And if you go into the book of Numbers, chapter 13, they were carrying bunches of grapes that were so large it needed two men to carry a bunch of grapes back to show the people. God, God was wanting to show them this is an example of my abundance for your life. He said, if you're sick of the manna, then cross over. Look at all the wonderful fruit. Look at all the wonderful food that's in the place of promise. But for us as Christians, it's not about the type of food we eat. It's about what we live by. And Jesus said these words. When he was being tempted of the devil, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If you and I are going to access God's promise, we have to live by what God says. Now that, that means something for everyone in this room. You're going to have to hear God's voice. You need to hear God's voice. Amen. God is still speaking to his people today. When you pray, when you read your Bible, God wants to speak to you. Did you know God wants to speak to you? You're not going to get the promises of God unless you hear God's voice. You know we're living in the most difficult days that the Bible talks about that Jesus prophesied would happen. He said there would be earthquakes in many places. Nearly every week on the news we hear of an earthquake somewhere. Right here in Australia, in New South Wales, just yesterday there was an earthquake. In many places, there will be wars and rumors of wars. While I was in Uganda, the president of Sudan said Juba is our enemy. Southern Sudan is our enemy. We are going to make war with Southern Sudan. Wars and rumors of wars. Praise God, you've got a country right next door to you, Uganda. Amen. They said, uh, if you try anything, we are coming in to help our Southern Sudan. Amen. These brothers. Hallelujah. Amen. With, regard, with regards to Sudan, while I was in Uganda, Prophet, uh, Pro, uh, Pastor Robert Kayanja, in the church where I was ministering, he has prophesied the death of three dictators. Two of them are already dead. One was Gaddafi. And the other one was in, um, I can't remember the name of the country, but the other one is the dictator that lives in the northern part of Sudan. <laughs> Uh, 
Not too many days from now, not in the near distant future, you will see the removal of that. Because God will remove him. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to live by what God says. We have to hear God's voice like never before. I'm telling you, people of God, you, if you do not hear the voice of God, you will not be able to survive in the days we're coming into. Amen. Seek God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, because you will need to hear His voice. Amen. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18 Where there is no vision Where there is no redemptive revelation of God Says the people perish He's talking, That's talking about God's people If you don't hear from God if you don't get revelation from God, you will perish. If you don't have any vision from God, you will perish. If your marriage doesn't have any vision from God, it will perish. You know, I had a very sad thing. I was, uh, we had a Sudanese family in our church. And they had some argument in the house. And the man hit the woman. <laughs> and her face swelled out like this. She had to go to the hospital. And because the police came and arrested him. And uh, I was trying to help them. The wife, you know, even though the police came, she was still very forgiving and wanting her husband to come back. But because he was embarrassed, he left her with my children. Came from southern Sudan looking for a better life. I wanted to see his marriage destroyed. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to bring life and life more abundantly. I said, You have to forgive your wife. I cannot. He said, I cannot. I said, Why not? He says, Because in my culture, in my culture, <laughs> The woman doesn't do anything like that. I am Sudanese. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> to me, that was tragic. That to me was very tragic. Because when you get born again, when you are born again, Jesus said you must be born again. <laughs> you have, he takes you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. He takes you out of one culture. You might never ask me to come back here again. <laughs> but I have to tell you the truth. He takes you out of one culture. He takes you out of the Sudanese culture. Amen. And brings you into the kingdom of God culture. The kingdom of God, the culture of the kingdom of God is different to the Australian culture. It's different to the Sudanese culture. So I said to this man, you have to understand, Amen. you did the wrong thing here. Amen. You hit your wife in the face. Amen. In our country. Amen. Amen. I think 
Now, some of you might be reacting right now inside and saying, <laughs> Amen. I agree with the man. But when you left, you might be able to do that in Sudan. But now you are in Australia. You can't beat your wife and get away with it. Tell somebody you can't get away with it. And if I hear you are beating your wife, I will come round and beat you. You still love me? <laughs> we have to live by revelation from God. Amen. If there's no revelation, you'll keep living in your past. But when God speaks, He releases you from your old life. He releases you from your past. The devil tries to keep you in your past. Well, I'm, I'm Sudanese. And that's the way it happens in Sudan. But it's not the way it happens in the kingdom of God. Many times people get do not access God's promise because they want to stay in their old culture. But the word of God, we have to read the Bible. Inside this Bible, there is a whole new culture. Amen? Amen. It releases you from your past. It restores your present. It activates your future. When God starts to speak of, to you of his intention for your life, it brings a whole new perspective. He's got a great plan for your life. It creates a new desire in us. It causes us to focus on the pursuit that God has for us. It brings about a momentum and a brand new passion in our life. When God speaks, it gives us a fearless power because we believe what he says. The next thing that we have to be able to do getting darker and darker in yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. next thing we have to do is be able to see. Everyone say, see. 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 This, is what, this is what the Lord said to Joshua in verse 2 of chapter 6. He said, see, I have given you Jericho. Notice he said, see. Without, if you can't see it, you won't believe it. You know, people say, unless I can see it, I won't believe it. Have you said that? Take a man man. But in the kingdom of God, remember we have to leave one way of thinking behind and embrace a new thing to get the promise of God. This is what Jesus said. If you believe it, you will see it. Amen. If you believe it, you will see it. Amen. You might have sickness in your body here today. Jesus said if you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. If you pray for the sick, they will recover. These signs will follow those that believe, he said. In my name, they will cast out devils. They will lay hands on the sick. And they will recover. Amen. Amen. But if you say, well, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> you may never ever see it. But if you first believe it, Jesus said, then you will 
What he was saying is that you need to be able to see it in your heart before you access it in the natural. If you can see something, you'll be able to seize it. To be able to see something, it's all conditional upon your heart. Your heart. The spirit of the man. The spirit of the man inside. Do you know your heart is affected by what you see with your natural eye? It says that your eyes, it says that your eyes are the window of your soul. So that means we have to be careful about what we put before our eyes. Many times we get trapped by what we see. A lot of people get caught up in pornography. And we think that that does not affect us. We think that that won't affect us. But I want to tell you what you let through your eyes will affect your heart. And if we keep putting before our eyes things that are wrong, things that are not right before God, it will affect your ability to be able to see the promise of God. God says to Joshua, see, I have given you Jericho.